What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Brigador in 2021 and seeing if it's still something you want to dive into. The game has gone through a lot of iterations since its initial release years and years and years ago, eventually getting an upgraded version called the Up Armored Edition. On top of that, they've released a modding DLC, which basically gives you an entire toolkit to fiddle with the game and create your own mods. Pretty cool. If you've never seen Brigador before, the general concept of the game is this. Great leader is dead. Solo Nobre must fall. What that means is that you are going into effectively like the North Korea of space. It was ruled by a tyrannical leader who basically had a cult of personality that allowed him to control every aspect of Solo Nobrean life. The planet is now engulfed in turmoil because three factions, the Spacers, the Corvids, and the Loyalists are all effectively fighting over the scraps that were left over in the power vacuum after Great Leader has died. There's a ton of lore to this game. There's a lot of interesting things to take a look at, but at its core, it is a randomly generated mech brawler. The entire point of the game is that you take a mech or a tank or an anti-grav vehicle or like a bodysuit and you try to complete missions from the freelance list over here. The game does come with a campaign that provides you with a little bit of context and a detailed tutorial on how to play the game, but I feel like the meat of the game is really kind of in freelance mode, where you go out, you do missions on behalf of the various factions, and then you also generate money, which allows you to buy new mechs and kit them out with fun new guns. Really, this game sort of personifies the idea of, like, play how you want. Now, the developer... I have followed kind of him on Twitter for a long time and some of the articles that he's corresponded with on Kotaku and a number of other gaming websites and he seems to be a guy that very much believes in the idea that a video game is part of the public commons like after you release it so the game is his creation but once you release it to the public they're gonna play it however they want and there's really nothing you can do to control that so why not lean into it. And in accordance with that, if you take a look at the settings, there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do in here uh, to customize your gameplay experience. Everything from infinite ammo, to having invincib invincibility, to disabling aspects of the HUD to make the game harder. Like, really, this entire game is, is kind of almost like a tool set to allow you to release as much destruction, DACA, and missiles as possible within the context of the Solo Nobrean conflict. And I think that's a really, really cool thing. So we're going to dive in today, spend about 25, 35 minutes with the game, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you did indeed want to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below. I do think that this is one of the better early indie games to ever be released. And for whatever reason, it never really got the fanfare or the love that other games of its generation like Spelunky or The Binding of Isaac got, even though I believe it is of equal quality. And so anyways, that's kind of why I'm doing this video here today, just to tap people on the shoulder and be like, hey, Memba Brigador, it still exists. And here's a little fun fact. It has an expansion coming out reasonably soon, from what I understand, called Brigador Killers, which is going to be a narrative-focused mech-building brawler uh, that's going to give us a little bit more information about the grimdark world of Brigador. And believe me, boy is it dark. If you go into the Acquisitions tab and you start buying Intel and you start buying lore just about kind of the general universe, you're like, man, this place is dark. Like, there are no good guys. Like, everybody is pretty much awful. From the Corvids to the Loyalists to the Brigadors, like, everybody in this game is kind of, like, the worst. Uh, it's basically a war crime simulator. And so anyways, let's jump on into freelance mode. We're going to go ahead and run a mission. There is a vast array of pilots that you can hire. They don't really change anything about the core gameplay. What they do change is the amount of money that you get paid for doing individual missions. Uh, and they also change who you'll be fighting against because certain pilots will only fight against certain people. Like, certain pilots are firmly loyalists. Some pilots are mercenaries, and they'll fight anybody for money. Some pilots really only agree with the Corvids and their political structure, and, like, so on and so forth. But anyways, I, I usually play a line for a little bit, or Alina. And so I've got Alina, and then the other guy that I usually play is... Where is he at? I don't remember his name. Uh, Phil Bromlin. Phil Bromlin, Alina, there's a bunch of different people in here. Really just read through their background and then just like play the person that you like the best. I liked her portrait, for example, so that's why I went with it. 
Uh, we can pick a vehicle over here. There is a massive amount of vehicles that you can play as. The campaign is a wonderful way to get to test drive a lot of these because every single mission in the campaign will give you like three to four choices of what you want to pilot with three to four different loadouts. And that'll help you find like your favorite vehicles and your favorite guns and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, inside here, I've unlocked most of the loyalist stuff. However, if you want to play something really, really fun, but really, really easy, we're going to play the Broodmare. That'll give you an idea of the destructive potential that we have going for us. This is a very, very heavy, very huge mech that really allows you to unleash some punishment on the enemy. Uh, we've got the King, which is a Gatling gun. It's a six round burst, or we can go with like a chain gun. Oh, I don't know. Let's go with the King. That sounds good. I bet you guys will like the King. And then we could go with the Pitbull, maybe? The Pitbull is a rocket pod. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm a rockets guy. I find that enjoyable. You do get a special ability. It can be everything from a smoke projector, which blocks line of sight. Enemies can't fire through it. They will have to walk through it before they can target you. But you can still shoot them because apparently we can magically see through smoke because, like, we're a mech piloting god. We've got, like, thermal imaging or something. Uh, we've also got EMP grenades. Very powerful. Basically shuts down any vehicle inside its radius when it impacts. Very, very good stuff. Active camouflage allows you to go invisible. And then audio kinetic pulse is basically a boombox on your mech that's so loud that it basically creates kinetic energy that wipes out everything around you. Kind of a cool, fun weapon if you're having problems with smaller mechs overwhelming you and basically just dancing around your feet faster than you can rotate to kill them. Just release a giant boombox pulse and annihilate all of them. Uh, we'll go with the EMP grenade for right now. So now that we've got our loadout selected, we've got to pick a mission. Uh, generally, the way that everything functions in this game is that the top is the easiest, the bottom of the list is the hardest. That's pretty much the way that it works for everything except for, like, weapons. So, like, when you're selecting vehicles, like, the ones at the bottom tend to be a lot lighter and a lot weaker, but they tend to have a bigger cash payout multiplier because, like, you're going up against a bigger challenge. Uh, with the missions, they tend to be a lot easier near the top, and they tend to be a lot harder near the bottom. And so, anyways, let's pick some stuff to do here. I think three districts will be too long. I'd like to show you guys multiple loadouts, so we'll go with random two. And we'll deploy on into there. Let's engage. Uh, the game works very, very simply. It uses tank controls. Whichever direction the arrow is pointing, a wasp is going to take you in that direction. You can move the top of your mech in any direction that you want. But just be aware that you are moving with respect to the isometry. So W will always move you upwards and kind of like this way. S will always move you down. And you've got to just kind of keep track of where your legs are at. It takes some getting used to, I promise. So on our left click over here, we've got super awesome auto cannon, but it goes through ammo very, very rapidly. On our left hand, we've got a missile pod. And then in our middle click, we can throw out our EMP grenade, like so. And the EMP grenade does function based on your velocity. So like if you're walking backwards and you throw the EMP, it'll go shorter. If you're walking forwards and you throw the EMP, it'll go further. So keep that in mind is that it does track your momentum. We don't really have any enemies on the grid right now. But our objective, as it is with all of the randomly generated missions, is to destroy four orbital cannons that are keeping opposition forces from landing on the planet. So there's one of them right there. When we light that thing up right there, there's a pretty good chance that a bunch of enemies are going to come to investigate. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple little weaponized kind of like, I don't know, technical trucks. And then there's kind of a tank right there. We'll kill him off. He dropped some ammo, which is great. I've got 666 devil bullets. Now, one of the main features of this game is that it's kind of like Rampage. Everything in it is destroyable, and in fact, you are financially compensated for everything that you destroy. This fact, in combination with the lore, makes me think that nobody is the good guy in this game. Like, you get compensated for destroying infrastructure, civilian buildings, it doesn't matter. Kill it all. Uh, I tend to avoid doing it because I'm a real nice guy. Oh, I wanted to shoot some missiles at him. I guess I didn't get my missiles off, though. This is an ammo depot. It's going to be an ammo depot for explosives like our missiles. I'm going to go ahead and walk back this way. Important control, you can press E at any time to realign your legs with the mouse. After I finish this guy off right here, I'll show you. That was an officer right there that we just killed. You can tell because they have like a little LED marker up above their head that's sort of simula uh, simulated by the HUD. If we flip around and I press E, there you go. It'll automatically realign your legs with whatever your facing is. People tend to, so I notice a lot of people when they play this game and they're early on, they're like, I can't keep track of where my legs are at. 
And I was like, you know, just make sure that you hold down E and face the direction you want to go after every, like, sortie. And that'll be the beginning of you really learning to pilot your Brigador mech. We've already made $100,000 today in a reasonably short amount of time. How about that? You want to make $100,000 in the pass of three minutes? That's pretty good payout right there. Then again, this kind of seems like a high-risk job. A job where you might end up dead, so maybe that's where the financial compensation comes from. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to... Oh, there's more enemies over here. I thought I got them all, but I guess that I didn't. Oh, there's another one down there, too. They're dropping so much ammo. It does despawn. You guys know that that's one of my pet peeves. I'm not a big fan of ammo that despawns. You can also destroy the ammo on accident just by shooting it. And so just be careful about that. We are locked and loaded right now. Uh, the space bar is going to allow you to do a stomp just in case there's smaller mechs that are outrunning you and you just can't turn your torso fast enough to get after them. Uh, that's a really, really good way to get rid of them is just stomp on their face. You're a stompy, clompy boy. Use that weight and the giantness of your mech against them. Nice little missile barrage right there to get rid of the orbital cannon. We've got one captain left to eliminate. We've got two depots left to eliminate. Two substations. We already got the comm tower. Now, this looks like a nice little residential district. I'm going to leave it alone. One of the things I really like about this game is that it's really good at show, don't tell. Like, if you look at all the hedges and everything that are supposed to be beautifying these neighborhoods, if you look at the other side, they're all propped up by, like, war braces and stuff like that. Like, little things about Solo No Brain society that kind of jump out at you as you play the game a little bit more and read the lore entries. Uh, it looks like, I think that's a guard mech right there. Yeah, those are guard mechs right there. They're protecting the gated neighborhood. Not anymore, they aren't. Now they're protecting the dirt face down. Listen, man, I'm sorry. Your seven-bedroom, four-bath mansion is going to have to take a little bit of a scuffing because there's people trying to murder me. I apologize for your property values, but honestly, being in the midst of a civil war probably isn't doing a great thing for the real estate market anyways. These little guys in yellow coats right here, those are civilian non-combatants. You can kill them and you get paid for it for some reason. I don't know why. But if you go through the lore, wearing a yellow coat in Solo Nobrean society is basically designating yourself as being contrite. E effectively, you're putting your hands up and saying, I surrender. It's the exact same thing as running a white flag. Uh, there are, however, there are guys that wear those yellow coats, and if their flashlight is red, they are loyalist suicide bombers that are hiding themselves as non-combatants in an attempt to kill you, uh, and they've strapped themselves with dynamite and are running straight at you. These are explosive right here. I will tell you this, 95% of my deaths in this game uh, happen because I step on, like, a gas station, or I accidentally step on a fuel truck, or, like, one of those random little pieces of, you know, pipe work that's got gas running through it. Uh, a lot of my deaths come from me just like happily spraying bullets at everything around me and cackling like a maniac and then accidentally stepping on something explosive. So like, watch out for things that are explosive. We've got a ballistic arms ammo dump down here. I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Oof, lots of people getting insurance payouts from their car insurance this week. All right, we'll go ahead and grab that over there. Honestly, if I was an insurance company, I just wouldn't insure anything that was on Solo No Bray. It's a bad idea. I just I feel like there's no good way for that to happen. We got another depot and we've got two substations left. The substations have an important function inside the context of the game. Uh, they keep the lights on. If you destroy the substations, all of the turrets will power down and whatnot, and all the lights will go out. You see all of the street lights are on? Uh, the madmen that are the developers of this game actually made it so everything that lights up turns off when you destroy the substations. So that's pretty cool. That's one of those nice little detail factors that I find to be really enjoyable about Brigador. Uh, we'll go ahead and wipe this out over here. Yep, fire some missiles, turn them into hit aisles. Cool, so the power is now out. I don't think there's gonna be any turrets on this mission because it's like an easier mission, but just in case there was, our last depot's over here, so I'm gonna make a mouse hole on this side and just kind of come straight through this wall. And then we'll wipe that thing out, and then it's time for us to go. We've completed every single objective and acquired every single bonus. Let's bounce. All right, we made it to the exit gate. We're all good to go. Let's get on and up and out of here. We've got another mission that we've got to take on. We don't have any options from it, so we get what we get. Let's go see. Our gear and our health is carried over in between in the HUD. The blue is our shields. The green is our hull. There is no way to restore your hull once it's gone, so don't lose hull. You can restore shields, however. Get rid of that refinery right there. We got a little mech coming to investigate, too, and a little tonk. There we go. Blow them up with some missiles. Uh, you can overcharge your shield kind of doom style. That's what the light blue is up there, but it does kind of diminish over time. 
I'm just gonna, oh, okay. All right, one of their captains wiping out their own infrastructure right there, trying to have a shot at me. A couple more vehicles on this side. We are a pretty tanky vehicle, so I'm not that worried about, like, really dying or anything else like that. We got two ammo packs over here, and I'm definitely going to need them if we're going to keep going. I'm almost out of machine guns. The thing about the King machine gun is that it drinks bullets. And so, unfortunately, you can really rapidly find yourself in a situation a lot of the time where you have flatly run out of ammo. We've got a laser ammo dump over here. We'll go ahead and nuke that real fast. I was hoping it would wipe out some of these combatants right here, like in the meantime. Unfortunately, it didn't go that way. Uh, that right there, he had a little eyeball above him. That's a spy. So spy units, what they do is they set off an alarm that instantly draws every enemy on the map to your position. On this map, probably wouldn't be that bad. On hard maps, that's a really, really, real. oh, there's a turret. Hold on, he's got to go. Turret's hurt. Oh, and another captain. Okay, we've got all kinds of problems over here. I've only got 250 rounds left. Just Brigadeur problems. We'll go ahead and wipe out that orbital gun since it's one of our objectives. We'll get that little dude right there. Unfortunately, us killing the guy that scooted up next to him, it wiped out. Oh, there's another turret. There we go. Turret's down. Okay, so we need to find the ballistic ammo dump. There's an ammo dump up here somewhere. So I'm going to try to lean mostly on missiles for right now. I really, I try to limit the amount of non-combatants I kill. I don't know if everybody else plays the game like that. But, like, that's how I play the game, is I try not to kill non-combatants if I can help it. I don't know, it just makes me feel guilty, dude. I feel like someday I'm gonna get to the pearly gates, and, like, you know, there's gonna be some bearded guy, and he's gonna be like, so splat. You know, you were a nice guy, you did your best, but you used to play this game called Brigador, which was basically kind of a war crime simulator. And you seem to cackle and really take a lot of joy in exterminating multitudes of non-combatants. And we just kind of want to ask you a few questions about that. Like, we already know your motivation, you know, omniscience and all that. But at the same time, I want to hear it come from you. Like, why'd you, why'd you stomp the little yellow guys, man? You didn't, you didn't have to stomp the little yellow guys. Totally unnecessary. They were surrendering. And I don't, I don't know, I was bored and it was a Saturday. But like, yeah, that's a terrible answer. That's, a, that's like the kind of answer that I would expect from a war criminal. <laughs> uh, we've got explosive ammo dump over here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that real fast because if we don't have machine guns, at least we'll have missiles. Ammo is a concern in this game, especially on the longer missions. This should give us a, fuel, a full fusillade, so we should be all right. And then we'll wipe it out so nobody else can use it. We get paid like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for destroying it. So, you know, you, you waggle thirty, forty thousand dollars at me, and I'm just like, well, thirty, forty thousand dollars is thirty, forty thousand dollars. He almost got me with the alarm right there. He tried real hard. Uh, we've got a priority target right here. He is now deader than dirt. That's our last priority target. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's too many enemies left around. If you're wondering why this seems really easy, it's because I brought like a crazy heavy class mech into a mission that's really not that much of a headache. However, if you bring this mech into one of the harder missions, that's where you're going to run into some fun times. I think I'm just going to go to the drop pod and get on out of here so that we can try a new loadout and you guys can see some, like, slightly smaller mech gameplay where I've got to actually be a little bit smart about the way that I do this. Uh, but there we go. We got our paycheck. Six million dollars. Not bad for, what is it, like 12 minutes work right there? Not too terrible. Not the worst paycheck that a person has ever derived. Uh, we can unlock new maps over here. I usually find that the ones that have the capital letters, these ones tend to be the fun boy maps. Let's unlock this one, since I've never seen it before. We've got to destroy four priority targets, and we're going up against moderate loyalists. Okay, let's pick a new vehicle. I... You know, there are some pretty cool tanks down here, but I'm not a big tank guy. I, I play mech games to play mechs. Which one do I want to run? I do like the Praetor. The Praetor is really, really enjoyable. Let's go with something a little bit tinier. We'll go with the Mantis. So the Mantis has two slots. We've got an Auxiliary 2 and an Auxiliary 1. That means that we can bring up... So we've got a couple different options here. The Jericho is basically... It's a grenade launcher railgun. Uh, that's the best way I know how to describe it. It has no arc, so you're not going to hit anything with it that isn't taller than, like, a certain height. But whatever it hits, it detonates an AoE and wipes out a bunch of stuff. 
It's a it's a scalpel. Weirdly enough, it's hard to describe a weapon like that as a scalpel, but it actually is. Uh, it's a precise weapon that's used for very specific situations, and every other situation it's basically useless because it's not going to land the hit. Uh, the belter is just your normal machine gun right there. We've got a 27 millimeter armor piercing chain gun. Okay. It's got a lower rate of fire. It's an anti-aircraft weapon. That sounds fun. Let's go with one of those. And then we'll throw a belter on the ox. Yeah. Let's do... Actually, what does the stutter do? Or we already did the stutter. The broiler. It's a laser shotgun. That does sound pretty cool. There is a death ray in this game where it's a laser shotgun that basically it puts out a cone and everything inside of it just gets pelted with like these randomized strobe lights, almost like an EDM show of lasers. And oh my God, it's so satisfying. But you can only equip it on the really, 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 really big mechs. Um, I think I'll go with the 76 millimeter cannon. That sounds good. That sounds like something enjoyable. We'll try the smoke grenade out. I can't guarantee we're gonna survive this, by the way. I've never done this mission before, so this one might be pretty nasty. Let's go ahead and engage. Yeah, that's a pretty cool cannon. I'll take that. Go ahead and wipe these guys out. Oh, it's burst fire. Hate everything about that. Not a burst fire guy. Yeah, there are more enemies on this one. I think that is a truth that we can validate. Uh, let's go ahead and stay moving. We got to get these little guys. Oh, never mind. He killed his own troops. Nothing but the best from the uh, from the loyalist leadership. Yeah, we're getting... Oh, those guys are grouped up. Come on. There we go. Give me the ammo. Give me the ammo. Stomp him. There we go. That little mech right there, I would like for him to die. That's what I would like. Unfortunately, leading him with a burst fire weapon is going to take skills that I did not come pre-equipped with. Luckily, we got a nice little shield overcharge right there. I'm going to cut off to the left over here. Killed a couple of those guys. There we go. The cannon done got him. All right. There we go. Lit him up nice and good. He walked right into my trap card. Got that dude right there with the one tap. Get on out of here, Tonks. Get on out of here. Tanks are nothing compared to battle mechs. Nothing. Not even a concern. What? Did he just try to stomp me? You were so much littler than me, though. Like, on one level, I really, really applaud just the ambition of that move. But on the other level, like, that was a really poor decision. You probably shouldn't have done that. Man, everybody dropping ammo out here. My recommendation with cannons and things like this cannon that I have is to target things that are near what you're trying to hit and let the AoE splash damage kill them. Like with the bigger enemies, they'll actually register the cannon shot, but with infantry and whatnot, it can be a little bit dubious. Or like, you see how he's got like a flat profile right there? Like anything flat profile or infantry can be really, really difficult to actually ding with some of like the straight firing cannons that have a low arc. And let's see, we've got a bullet ammo dump over here. Don't think I'm gonna need it actually. I think we'll be okay. Our ammo is looking really, really positive. Uh, that was an easy clap right there. Please die. I'm being shooted. Okay, you're dead. Go ahead and put a little bit of damage on him. Put a little bit of AOE on these two cats. You can press the shift key, by the way, to squat your mech down. It's going to reduce all the, tam the damage you take by, like, a really significant level. So if you find that you're, like, more of a turret build, so, like, some of the some of the mechs perform very, very well in stationary mode because they have very high shields, and your shields become stronger when you are stationary in the squat mode, too. And so, actually, they can function a bit like a slow-moving turret uh, that you deploy effectively. That's a mortar. I'm not going to wait and see what happens to me when I get hit by that. There we go. I got to get that entire regiment wiped out. Okay, another tank over there. You're now dead. And we got bullets over here. I would like to add those to my collection. I, I don't know if you can call it a collection if I'm just planning on, like, feeding it into the receiver and firing it. I don't know. Uh, we need to wipe out some of these walls. Apparently, there's, like, a rivalry between tank fans and mech fans. And I don't even know how that's a thing because mechs are just, like, objectively superior. Like, I don't know. I have no interest in, like, piloting, like, a roly-poly caterpillar waffle brick. You know what I mean? But mechs. 
mechs are over-engineered, seven-story tall war crimes. Like, they are the best. Okay, we're in a little bit over our heads here. I'm going to come back around. Unfortunately, that civilian got stomped on. Oh, I thought if I could time it right, I could get that guy right there. Get him with the old stompy wompies. Okay, we're going to squat down. Make our fire a little bit more accurate. There we go. All better. Get that shield recharged. Grab a little bit of the ammo. And then I don't know if this is actually like a, a single mission or if this is going to be a sequence of missions. I wasn't really paying attention. Oh, my God. The destruction in this game is absolutely glorious, by the way. Like, if you spend a lot of time commuting and, like, you find that you spend a lot of time just, like, on the 80 or, like, on the 12 or whatever major highway is near where you live, just sort of, like, banging your steering wheel and being like, my free time, it's dying. This game is a great way to blow off steam. You can go in here and just destroy the highway and punish it for its sins. Look at that. I knocked holes in the highway. Take that. Yeah, take that, Highway 12. That's what you get for making my trip take three hours instead of 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Who connects a major North Bay thoroughfare with two lanes? Who thought that was a good idea? Nobody! Nobody thought it was a good idea! All right. Uh, we made five million bucks off that one. Not bad. It's a pretty good paycheck. But yeah, there's so many things to unlock and play around with in this game. It is a bit of a grind, as I've noticed. But the really cool thing about that is, like, I saw somebody post on the Steam forums that was like, why are the missions and stuff so expensive? Like, I gotta do so many missions just to unlock one mission. And the developer jumped on and he was like, hey, here's the, uh, here's the command inside the command line just to, like, spawn yourself a bunch of money. Like, I actually really love that about the developer, is that, like, he doesn't see anything wrong with just sort of, like, cheating to get the money so you can unlock the thing that you want play the game however you want he's created like this product and he like wants you to enjoy it however way you enjoy it the most i really really respect that actually and so anyways brigador fantastic game loads of content to churn through i i would hazard a guess that like i've got about 10 or 11 hours in game and this is pretty much what i've unlocked like everything that has like a little diamond next to it is something that i've unlocked um and there's just loads and loads of things. I mean, this game has like an audiobook type deal that you can get to go with it that has like sort of voice acted passages that tell you about the world. Inside the acquisitions menu, there's intel on every vehicle, every single unit, every single character. There's lore. So you can like really sink into this game in like an interesting way, even though the actual gameplay itself is very narrative light. And I think it's going to act as a really good primer for their next game, Brigador Killers. Uh, just due to the fact that they've already said that Brigador Killers is narrative focused. And so this game could act as like a really, really good primer to get you into the second game and come in knowing what you're doing the same way that you come into like Battletech or Mech Warrior, knowing about House Steiner and House Davian and the Draconis Combine and everything else. I like Brigador. I, I think that Brigador is one of those games that was really cheated, in all honesty, with regards to being recognized for what it was. This was a game that released in like, what, 2013, 2014? And, like, the graphics are fantastic. The lighting is great. I love the pre-render sprites. They look fantastic. They're nostalgic, but at the same time, they're tightened up, high resolution, and modern. Good stuff. I mean, it's one of those games where you can just revel in the annihilation and the devastation of a map. And there is a place for that. And so, anyways, if you've never seen Brigador before and you are a fan of mech games, I cannot recommend it highly enough. This is a really, really enjoyable romp once you kind of figure out the controls and know how to, like, pilot I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I'll see you there.